know people who never work with more than one layer in their InDesign document. They manage all of their objects using skin to back and bring to front, and there's nothing really wrong with that other than it will eventually drive you totally insane, especially in a complicated layout. No, it's much better to create multiple layers in your document and use them to organize your objects. Let's look at the layers panel in InDesign. Every document starts with at least one layer in it, layer one. But you can add your own layers, rename them, hide them, lock them, and more. Let's see how. To create a new layer, click on the New Layer button in the Layers panel. But you know what? If you click on it, it adds a new layer but doesn't let you name it. So that's kind of annoying. So let me undo that with Command-Z or Control-Z on Windows. And instead, I'm going to Option-click on the New Layer button or Alt-click on Windows. And that forces InDesign to open the New Layer dialog box. Here, I can give it a name. Let's say I'll call it the text layer. I'll get into these other options in the dialog box later in this movie. I'll click OK, and now I've got a new layer. Let's do it again. I'll create another one called artwork, let's say, or you can call it images, anything you feel like. Click OK, and while I'm at it, why don't I create a new one called guides. So now I have four layers in my document, but now I need to start putting objects on those layers. How do I do that? Well, let's start with the text frames. I'm holding down the shift key with the selection tool, and I'm clicking on each of the text frames on this page, and I'm going to move all of these onto my text layer. Notice in the layers panel, as soon as I select something, I get a little square. That colored square is the proxy that represents any objects that are selected on the page. If I want to move these objects onto the text layer, I simply click and drag that proxy up onto the text layer. Did you see how the color changed? The highlight color of these objects reflects the color of the layer. Okay, now why don't I grab the images, and I'll move those up to the artwork layer. Oh, I forgot that one. I'll move that one up as well. And I'll move this one down to the text layer. Simple as that. I have now organized all my objects on my page onto layers. Oh, I missed one. Let me go out of the preview mode by hitting W. Ah, uh, there's my guide. I knew I had a guide hiding in there somewhere. I'm going to select my guide and move that up to a layer as well. The idea that you can put a guide on a layer is revolutionary in page layout because it means you can have different layers with different sets of guides and turn the layers on and off depending on which guides you want to see. For example, if I don't want to see that guide, I simply click on the little eyeball icon here and it hides it. That whole layer, everything on that layer, is hidden. If I want to get rid of the text, I click on that one, and the text goes away. It didn't delete the text, it just hit it. If I want to bring it back, click again, and the text comes back. I can also lock a layer. For example, if I click in this next column, it adds a little padlock icon on the text layer. Now if I try and click on a text frame, it clicks right through the frame to that big frame that's sitting behind it. All the text frames are locked, so I can't accidentally move them, or I can't accidentally change them, or even select them. Now what if I want all my text on top of the images? Easy to do. Simply grab the layer, and drag it up above the layer you want to move it to. When you see that black line, let go of the mouse button. Now the text is on top of the artwork layer. If I want to change the name of a layer, or change other options, just double click on it. Brings up the layer options dialog box. And I'll change the name. Let's say I'll call this one Background. You can also change the show and lock settings, just like you can in the panel. And you can also adjust how guides are handled on that layer. I'm going to cover the text wrap option later on in this chapter, and I'll cover the print layer option in a later chapter. One more trick to the layers panel that I really have to let you know about. If you option click on a layer or alt click on Windows, it selects all the objects on that layer. For example, if I want to select all the artwork, I simply option click or alt click on Windows and it selects all of those objects for me automatically. As you can see, building and using layers is not required, but it really helps you organize your documents. Okay, here's a wacky concept that you have to get into your head before you really become an internet expert. You know that text and graphics both go inside frames, right? But did you know that you can put any object inside of a frame? In fact, you can put a whole frame inside of another frame. This concept is called nesting, and it turns out to be crucially important. For example, let's make a new frame and move one of these pictures into it. I'll go out of preview mode by hitting W so we can actually see our frames. 
and I'll choose the rectangle frame tool and draw a frame over here. Now I want to get this picture into that frame. How do I do it? I can't use the selection tool because that would actually select the whole frame and the picture inside. Instead, I'll hit A for the direct select tool, select the picture inside that frame, and then go to cut it. Now if I want to put it inside this frame, can I simply paste it with Command V or Control V on Windows? No, you can't. That creates a new frame and puts the picture into that frame. This is very confusing for beginning InDesign users. This really throws people a lot. Let me delete that and go back again. If I want to put that picture inside this frame, I have to select the frame with either the selection tool or the direct select tool, and then choose not paste, but rather paste into. Paste into is the nesting feature. It places that image inside that frame. Paste into is also good for all kinds of special effects. For example, let's go grab that ellipse frame tool again and draw an ellipse over here. Now I'll press V for the selection tool and I'll select that background text frame and cut it with Command X or Control X. I'll put it inside this frame, so do I choose paste? No, I choose paste into. And you can see that that text frame is now inside that frame. I've nested a one frame into another. If I wanted to select that text frame, perhaps to move it around, I can do that easily by clicking on the Select Content button up here. We saw this in an earlier movie. Click once on that, and it selects the content, in other words, the frame that's nested inside the frame. And now I can drag the center point of that object wherever I want to drag it to. I'll be talking about making object groups in a later movie, but suffice it to say that if you make a group of objects, it acts like a single object. And so you can paste that whole group into another frame too. Nesting objects inside of other objects can obviously get out of hand and become really complex, but it's extremely helpful for a wide range of layout effects. InDesign has a wide variety of drawing tools, including a fully featured Bezier pen tool, just like Illustrator. But none of that really matters much to me because I can't draw. But I can make small shapes, like ovals or rectangles, and then edit them to get the look that I want. Let me show you how it's done. First, I've got the Jocko sheet file open for my exercise files, and I'm going to use the direct selection tool from the tool panel to select this frame. Now, as I mentioned in an earlier movie, I can actually click on one of the points on this frame and move it. I can just drag it around anywhere I want. If I hold on the shift key, it constrains it vertically or horizontally. So when I let go of the mouse button, the text reflows in this angle. That's pretty cool, but what if I want a curve? Well, I can get a curve easily enough if I use the pen tool in the tool panel. I'll select the pen tool, and now I'm going to put a curve on this frame over here. Well, first I need to select that frame. How do I select the frame with the pen tool? Easy. Hold down the command key or control key on Windows. That gives me the selection tool temporarily. That's a great keyboard shortcut to keep in mind. With almost any tool, if you hold down the command key or control on Windows, you get the selection tool temporarily. I'll click on the frame while I'm still holding the key down, then I'll let go of the key, and I get the pen tool back. Why don't I zoom in here by pressing Command 2 or Control 2 on Windows, and now watch the pen tool as it goes over the edge of the frame. Did you see that? It's a subtle change, but there's a little plus sign in the cursor. Watch those cursors, they tell you what's going to happen. When there's a plus sign on the cursor, it means I can click, and it's going to add a point. Now I'll hold on the Command key or Control key on Windows, and I can drag that point. See how I added a point right in the middle of the segment? But what if I want it to be a curve point? No problem. I'll do the same thing over here, but instead of just clicking, I'm going to click and drag. You can see the handles. Now I've got a Bezier curve right in the middle of that segment. If I wanted to make this a Bezier curve, I could do that easily enough by holding down the Option key or Alt on Windows. When you have the pen tool, and you've got the Option or Alt key held down, it turns into the Convert Point Type tool. Now I can click and drag, and I get the same kind of control handles. If I later decide that I don't want that extra point on there, it's easy to get rid of. Just place the pen tool on top of it, and it's hard to see here, but the cursor changes to a little minus sign. Instead of a plus sign, it's a minus sign, and that means if I click,
it's going to delete that point. So the pen tool is a very flexible way to edit your frames. Let me show you two other ways to edit your frame shapes. I'll scroll over here, and I want to change this frame so that it's inside an ellipse. I want that image to be in an ellipse, in an oval, instead of a rectangle. I would not want to have to draw an ellipse or an oval with the pen tool. That would drive me crazy. So instead, I'm going to use the selection tool, click on that picture, and I'm going to use the Convert Shape feature. And Convert Shape shows up in two places. First, it's under the Object menu, down here, and I could just choose Ellipse. Or, instead, let me show you the other place you can find it. If you choose Window, Object and Layout, Pathfinder, it opens the Pathfinder panel, and all the Convert Shape options are in the Pathfinder panel as well. I find this to be more useful, so let me use them here. I'm going to change this into an ellipse, right? How do I do it? It's as easy as clicking. Look for the ellipse, and click. Now it's in an oval. If I wanted it to be in a triangle, I would choose the triangle instead. But what if I want a more complex shape? Well, that's where the Pathfinder features come in. Let me show you how these work. You have to have two or more objects selected. So I'm going to create a new frame on top of this frame. I can't actually see that empty frame right now because I'm in preview mode, so I'm going to hit the W key to go out of preview mode. Now I can actually see my frame edges, even for empty frames. It's a little easier to see what's going on here. I need to select two more objects, so I'll hit V to jump to the selection tool, and then shift click on this background image to select both of these objects here. Right, so I've got an elliptical frame on top of an image frame. And I'm going to use the Subtract tool. The Subtract tool takes the top image and, like a cookie cutter, cuts through the bottom image. So I now have a frame which looks sort of like this. In fact, if I hit A for the Direct Select tool, I can actually see where the Bezier points are on that frame. Very nice. Let me undo that with Command-Z or Control z on Windows, and instead I'm going to move this point down into the middle of this frame. Again, with the Selection tool, I'll select both of those shapes, and now I'm going to use the Subtract tool, and now I've got something different. I have sort of a square donut or a square bagel. I can actually put this on top of this one and see through the middle. I actually cut a hole right in the middle of that frame so I can see through it. That's called a compound shape. So that's the Subtract Pathfinder feature. Let me show you what the other Pathfinder features do. You scroll down here and play with this one. I'll go make another ellipse on top of this frame. And I'll use the Selection tool to select both of these. But before I do, I need to tell you something very important about how the Pathfinder features work. When I did the Subtract Pathfinder feature, I had the ellipse on top of the image. Because with Subtract, the top image cuts through the bottom image, and the bottom image remains. But with all the other Pathfinder features, it's whatever image is in the top frame, whatever content is in the top frame, that survives. So in this case, I'm going to have to move this image on top of that ellipse. We saw how to do that in an earlier movie. Object, arrange, bring to front. Now, I'll select both of those, and the image is in front, so I know that Add and these other buttons will result in the image being in the resulting frame. Let's go ahead and use Add. You see how this shape is now very complex. I'll hit A to go to the Select tool. You can actually see the additional points, and you can even see the edge of the image where it won't fit into the frame. I'll undo that with Command-Z or Control-Z, and now I'll try these other ones. Intersection results in a shape which is just where the two shapes overlapped. I'll undo that. Exclude is just the opposite. It results in a shape where it's everything except where the two shapes overlap. I've actually never had a reason to use that, but I'm sure it's useful somehow. I'll undo that. This last one is a cookie cutter, but it actually takes the bottommost object and cuts up through all the other objects. This works with two objects, but it could be three objects, or ten objects, or twenty objects. As many as you want, as long as they're all selected when you use the Pathfinder feature. And it doesn't have to be an image frame, this could be a text frame, just as easily. Now, as I mentioned in an earlier movie, if I really need heavy-duty illustration tools, you know, I would use Illustrator. You can always copy and paste the object into Illustrator.